Hello, my name is Brandon Enright, and today I want to show you Tom Z's multi dodecahedron. I just got this puzzle today. I've been anticipating this puzzle for months. I'm incredibly excited to finally have it, um, and it is. It just surpasses all of my expectations. It is definitely more beautiful in person than I was imagining. Um, pictures didn't really do it justice. And it turns far, far, far better than I was expecting. Um, I was expecting just the complexity of the puzzle to, to make it not turn well. Um, it turns this essentially the same as Eric Virgo's Master Pent Ultimate, and I, I suppose I should have suspected that since really there's nothing fundamentally different between this puzzle and a Master Pent Ultimate. Um, the hole and, and the hollowed pieces are, are predominantly cosmetic. The, the difference in the pieces is, is very minimal in order to, to make this puzzle work. And it is just, just absolutely beautiful. Um, the static coefficient of friction to get it to turn is pretty high, so to get it to turn there's this sort of little bump that you have to overcome of friction. And that's just because the puzzle's been tightened down a whole bunch. And just exactly like on Eric Virgo's Master Pent Ultimate, um, if you tighten the puzzle a whole bunch, it doesn't catch. Um, so this puzzle, like, no problem, I have not had it catch at all. Um, you just get everything aligned. You don't even have to get it that closely aligned, and it just it just turns beautifully. Um, but the, so the, the static friction is relatively high. So if I, you can see it sort of jump there. Once you get it going, it just turns flawlessly. Um, so I should say a little bit about what this puzzle is and how it works. I believe it was. Carl Hoff, who originally realized the sort of the mathematically the mathematical nature of this puzzle, that when you slice this deep, the slice towards the center each of each face at the center, it'll create a little megaminx, a little teeny tiny megaminx in the center. And it'll, in fact, it'll also create a, um, all of the pieces, all the way from, so here's a Mega Minx, and then a Pyraminx Crystal, and then a, a Star Minx. It, it'll create all of the pieces on the inside of that puzzle. And because these are designed, this, all of this puzzle, and this puzzle, and this puzzle, they're all designed via what's known as the, the shells mechanism. There's this two-dimensional sketch of concentric circles that have been drawn. And each concentric circle describes an inner puzzle, essentially. So it describes the pieces of this inner puzzle. And there's a cut depth that sort of starts out shallow and gets zigzagged through these concentric circles um, in order to create pieces. So it'll create the Megaminx pieces internally via the, the shells mechanism, and it'll create the Pyraminx crystal pieces, and it'll create the Starminx pieces. Um, but th there's these the, the zigzag that goes from shallow all the way to deep. Um, it does it in such a way that there are rails and grooves on all the inner pieces that can hold on to the outer pieces, and I'll, I'll show you this in a minute. Um, and so even though it starts out really shallow on the, on the inner concentric circle, it's, it ends up really deep on the outer. And so the external portion of this puzzle is that master pentultimate cut depth. And then it steps a little bit shallower, and as you can see on the center here, there's a Megaminx in the center here. So I'm in the process of tumbling Eric Virgo's Master Pent Ultimate just to polish the pieces and, and make them look beautiful. And so I have some here, so I'll show you the equivalent. Um, and so the only difference between th this puzzle and a traditional shells mechanism Master Pent Ultimate is that when you do a shells mechanism traditionally, the inner puzzles, the inner Megaminx, the, the inner Pyraminx crystal, the, the inner Starminx, this is a MF8 Starminx right here, um, and this is Tom Z's uh, regular, not mini, but regular Starminx. Um, the, the inner puzzles, they're all spherical. And because you drew these concentric circles in 2D and then you revolved it around each one of the turnable axes for each one of the faces, um, it creates spherical inner puzzles. And so Tom had to do some flattening 
of some of the internal pieces or parts of the internal pieces in order to create a dodecahedron for the internal megaminx and have obviously a dodecahedron on the outside here. So this is the megaminx center on Eric Virgo's Master Pent Ultimate. Um, so it's equivalent to that center right there. And because Eric didn't cut holes in the outside in order to see the inner pieces, he just doesn't worry about them being flat on the surface. So the, the, each one of these pieces is, is just spherical. Um, and then, so this is a Megaminx edge that connects to, and so you can see as you would turn it, um, it connects to the center in that way. And then this is a Megaminx corner. And you can see the rail, the grooves for the rails to fit in um, so that these pieces hold on to each other and so that they can hold on to pieces on the outside. Um, and so that corner, edge, and center go like that together. And then the Pyraminx crystal edge hooks into the Megaminx corner like that. And so if I take, so this, Meffert's Pyraminx Crystal is also a shell's mechanism buildup, and so this is a Pyraminx Crystal edge, and the inner base mechanism is identical because they're both essentially, you, you basically it can only be this shape mathematically due to the way the shell's mechanism is, mechanism is built up. Um, and so the external shape of the piece is sort of dependent on the additional stair stepping and the outer geometry of the puzzle, but internally the pieces are essentially the same. And so just as this sits in between two Megaminx corners, so does this sit in between two Megaminx corners. And then the Starminx point right there, that's between two Pyraminx crystal edges, the Starminx point, this is a Starminx, or Starminx um, edge or Pyraminx crystal edge, then the Starminx point goes like that. And as you can see, just this, so you take a look at um, on the multi-dodecahedron. So there is a Starminx edge right there. You can see the Starminx edge, and you can sort of see that they correspond to each other perfectly. And then there's the Starminx point, and so they connect together just like that, like that. And then the Starminx center slash pentultimate center slash pentultimate, or master pentultimate center um, goes like this. So, so you, if this is that center, you can see it corresponds right there, and they hook in perfectly nicely like each other, like that. So, it was this shell's mechanism buildup that allows all of these inner puzzle pieces to be inside of this puzzle. And so internally, as, as I turn this, you can see the inner the inner face turns with the outer face. But on the side here, I'm going to turn the bottom here. And so we're looking at that pink, that top pink face. That corresponds to the face on a Megaminx. And as I turn the bottom part of the puzzle here, you can see the bottom part of the puzzle turns and the top stays fixed. That's identical to if I were doing this. So if I were turning it like, well, believe it or not, this puzzle actually turns better than this puzzle. This puzzle catches all the time, but that is the equivalent motion. So the entire puzzle turns underneath this face. And then here's the, Pyraminx crystal, and so those are the Pyraminx crystal edges, and those are the Pyraminx crystal edges, and then these are the Starminx points, then those are the Starminx points on a master pentultimate, and then this piece, this puzzle also has the pentultimate corners right there. Um, and so these, these pentultimate corners, when you turn a face, instead of just five corners being turned, the a lower five, ten corners get turned in each turn. So exactly half the corners on the puzzle are turned um, each for each face turn. So it's it's a deep, the, these, these pieces are, are deep cut. Now, because I'm crazy, and so well, obviously I ordered a multi-dodecahedron, so I must be crazy. 
Um, but because I'm crazy, or even more crazy, I asked Tom to give me super stickers. So this is a super multi-dodeki kitchen. Every single piece on this puzzle is unique. Um, and that is all of these Starminx points that, you know, normally you'd have, you know, five white Starminx points and five blue and five purple and so on and so forth. Each one of these Starminx points is unique. Um, so you can see that this is the light blue, purple, white Starminx point. Um, and, you know, this is the yellow, blue, red Starminx point. And you can see the orientation internal there in the center. You can see the orientation of the Mega Minx centers in there. And you can see the orientation of the outer Master Pentultimate or Pentultimate um, centers. And so this puzzle is basically as hard as you can get for face turning to a It's It's you know, unless you do something exotic, you know, with weird circle cuts. But um, in terms of just traditional face turning dodecahedrons, this puzzle is equivalent to solving a Super Mega Mix, a Super Pyraminx Crystal, a Super Star Minx, and a Super Master Pentultimate all at the exact same time. I mean, if everything went smoothly, I would expect this puzzle to take me about two to two and a half hours to solve. That is, I would solve the inner Mega Minx, the inner Super Mega Minx, and then I'd solve the Pyraminx crystal edges, and then I would solve the Star Minx points, and then I would solve the um, the Pentultimate corners. And if I didn't make any mistakes, and basically if I didn't need to use an undo button, which obviously doesn't exist in real life, um, then I would be able to solve this puzzle in between two and two and a half hours physically. But as I've learned trying to solve a Star Minx, or really a Master Pentultimate too, um, any mistake is usually catastrophic. So if I screw up, you know, I've solved all the puzzles except for the last couple of corners, and I screw up trying to solve the, the Pentultimate corners, that screw up is most likely going to break the inner the inner Mega Minx. And then I'm gonna have to resolve the inner Mega Minx and sort of start over. Um, so I'm anticipating that this puzzle will take me probably about eight hours of, of solving effort. Um, and so that's, you know, solve it, screw up, start over, solve it, screw up, start over. And I, I suspect that it'll probably take me about eight hours of sort of getting comfortable with this puzzle before I can solve it once through without any catastrophic mistakes. You know, if any, if I make any mistakes, I'll be able to sort of figure out where I did and sort of work my way backwards, um, which just is, is very, very difficult. Um, and so, yeah, I'm expecting this to take like eight hours to solve. But I've been looking forward to this puzzle for months. It is, it just has surpassed all of my expectations. It turns beautifully. It looks beautiful. Um, it, it just, it's perfect. And I just can't thank Tom enough for doing all of the hard work to bring this puzzle to life. You know, it, this was the collaboration of a lot of people, Carl with the design, and then lots of people um, sort of refining the, the shells mechanism over time, and then Tom, you know, applying all of the, the ideas and getting this puzzle working. And it, this is really, like, in my opinion, the ultimate culmination of effort of a whole bunch of people, but mostly Tom, uh, to make just the most beautiful face turning to a dichyhedron you can have. And so I am thrilled, and when I scramble this, it probably won't look solved again for weeks. Um, but I can't wait to start, and I feel very privileged that uh, I have now the opportunity, thanks to Tom, to actually solve one of these physically. So thanks, Tom.